Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be giving you a complete jailbreak tutorial for the iPhone 3G that works in whatever the title says. Currently it's 2021, but I'm just going to update the title if it still works in the future. Uh, so, I don't like long intros, so we're just going to get started here. This is for iOS 4.2.1. It should also work on the second generation iPod Touch. You'll just need to change a couple small steps, which I'll go over when we get there. The first thing you're going to need to do this is an old computer. Now, if you're hoping to do this on your modern Mac or your Windows 10 machine, chances are you don't have a chance. <laughs> now, Windows 10, maybe. You're not going to have much luck there, but it's possible that you could get it to work. But modern Mac, well, it's pretty much out of the question due to just how much Apple has changed. These are old tools. This has a copyright date of 2011, and it simply doesn't play nice with modern software. So you unfortunately will need an old PC or an old Mac. This is a tutorial for Windows, but not a whole lot's different on Mac. So if you are using a Mac, go ahead and use Snow Leopard. Uh, you just gotta make sure you have a really old version of iTunes. Just try to downgrade it if that's possible. Again, this isn't a Mac tutorial, so you might have to do a bunch of extra stuff, which is why I recommend just finding a way to get Windows. If you have an old computer in the closet, go ahead and dust it off because you'll pretty much need Windows 7. XP should also work. Vista might also work, but we all know how Vista can be. Windows 8 may work, but just the best luck here is Windows 7, in my experience at least. So the next thing you're also going to need is an old version of iTunes, because old jailbreaks don't play nice with modern versions of iTunes either. This is version 11.2, uh, so I'll leave a download link to that version in the description. You'll just need to make sure if you have a 32-bit computer or a 64-bit computer to download the proper version. Uh, otherwise, this will not work. Also, make sure after you install, you restart the computer and unplug and plug back in your iPhone if you've had this have it plugged in all this all this time, because you need to make sure the proper drivers are running. And the first time you go ahead and do this, when you put the device in DFU mode, which we'll have to do in a minute, uh, it may not work the first time because DFU mode drivers have to be installed. If that happens, which it may happen for me, then just start over again. And if it happens for me, then I'll go over that too. So now that you've got all that out of the way, hopefully, if you're still here, I'm first of all, I'm sorry if you don't have an older computer. There really isn't any way around that. But if you're one of the lucky few who does have an older computer, this is a MacBook running boot camp. I use old Macs for, the, for these things a lot of times because they generally have a better luck of working than a PC just because they're Apple hardware. They play nicer with other Apple hardware. That doesn't mean you can't do it if you don't have an old Mac running Windows. That's a very niche thing. Uh, it's just, for me, this gives me uh, a better chance of it working. Although it should still work for you even if you have a PC. Just make sure your install isn't chock full of junk as I found that can interfere sometimes. But uh, virtual machines also will not work because the USB driver isn't good enough. It isn't low level enough to detect this stuff. So virtual machines unfortunately won't work, I'm sorry. Now, first thing you're gonna need is the actual tool itself. It's called Red Snow. Chances are you've probably heard of it if you're coming here uh, because you've looked at some other old tutorial. You've heard of Red Snow before probably, but what you'll need is you'll need version 0.9.9 B9D. The reason why you'll need this old version is because newer versions of Red Snow tend to break old jailbreaks as they had moved on to iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 and 4S and stuff like that. And they hadn't really paid attention to whether old jailbreaks were working in the new versions. And so a lot of old jailbreaks broke. This version should still work. Now, uh, another thing you'll need is the IPSW restore file for iOS 4.2.1. I don't actually have it, so I'm going to go download it right now so I can show you what to do. So open up a browser and then go to the website ipsw.me. And this is a site that hosts IPSW restore files for all kinds of devices, as you can see. Even Mac stuff, which I don't even know what's up there. Now, if, you're, if you have a 3G, go to iPhone. If you have an iPod Touch 2nd gen, go to iPod Touch and HomePod. But I have an iPhone, so I'm going to go here. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom, it should be the second option, iPhone 3G. Again, if you have an iPod Touch, pick the second gen. 
then click on 4.2.1, the latest version, and then download. This downloads it directly from Apple servers. You can see it's downloading it from blah 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 dot apple dot com. And you'll see because that download speeds are really fast, even on this super old computer. This is a late 2006 MacBook. So this is going to download real quick. All right, and it has to finish. So then hit on extras, hit select IPSW, and then I have this folder selected from when I was jailbreaking my iPhone 2G. If you need a tutorial for that, I made one a year ago. You can check it out. It's in the description down below. Uh, but I'm just going to go select it. It's going to be my downloads folder. All right, downloads, 4.2.1 restore, and then it identifies the build, and it will be used for the rest of this Red Snow session. So then go ahead and hit jailbreak and install Cydia. And then it'll do a bunch of stuff here. Just let it do all that. Uh, we'll be on this screen. You don't need to pay attention to many of these options here. Just make sure install Cydia is checked. And then the ones I'd pay attention to are everything from Verbose Boot to enable battery percentage. Don't mess with anything else. Verbose Boot uh, makes you see all the command line stuff that's actually going on instead of the Apple logo on boot. Do that if you want. I personally don't like it. Same with custom boot logo and recovery logo. That's for just regular boot and recovery mode. So, of course, if you did want to make things look pretty funny, you could go ahead and uh, like add a modern logo for that, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Then these three options down here. Enable multitasking, home screen wallpaper, and battery percentage. These top two slow down the device a lot. Uh, iPhone 3Gs are not fast on iOS 4, and this does not help. And so I'm going to enable home screen wallpaper but not multitasking because that is not useful enough. That's iPad multitasking. It's just not useful enough to constitute the speed difference that it really does make. And I'm gonna keep battery percentage on because you can disable that in settings if you want and it's super easy and uh, it's great. So then I will hit next. And then this is the part you really have to be careful with. This is putting the device into DFU mode. Uh, I believe this stands for device firmware update mode. It's basically an emergency mode that's like one step lower than recovery and you need to do a, do that to uh, jailbreak. So hold down on the power button if your iPhone's on, make sure it does have a good amount of charge. These batteries are getting old. And then slide to power down. Then once your phone is shut off, get two fingers ready on the home button and the power button, or make sure you can get them there quickly because as soon as you hit next, it won't give you any warning. It'll just start giving you the instructions. Now, my camera really doesn't want to focus. I'm going to turn my brightness down to hopefully help with that a bit, but uh, yeah, it still kind of blows things out, but I'll try to do this as best I can. So hit next and then immediately put your finger on the power button as soon as you hit next and then hold down on the home button just a few seconds later. And then, once it tells you to do this, release your hand from the power button and keep holding on the home button. Sorry about the background noise, that's my mom walking outside, I'm sorry for that. And then it'll start doing a bunch of stuff very rapidly, assuming it's detected your device correctly. Now, we just had to install the, some drivers there, so we're getting interrupted by everything. My mom and these stupid warnings about my, me not being activated. So it's just doing a bunch of stuff here. This is all autonomous. Again, really? <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Now we're getting downloading jailbreak jailbreaking data. And as soon as you see this, well, guess what? You're probably safe. It's very rare that things go wrong after you see that screen where you get some verbo stuff. Uh, once you get to this point, you've gotten past all the normal problem points, and you should be good to go. So if you've seen like macOS do a verbose boot, stuff like checking catalog hier hierarchy, hierarchy, <laughs> that's hard to pronounce, uh, is all stuff that's pretty normal, as this is Unix-based, so it's basically verbose booting iOS right now. And then soon, I don't know if this replaces that, but we should get the, there we go! We should get the running pineapple that is the classic logo of Red Snow.
Oh my god, I've never had this happen so many times when we're recording. I can't redo this though, we're already too far in, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. I'm sorry. But, uh, flashing NOR. Sorry about that again, I'm not gonna re-restore my entire iPhone just to record it again because of a couple bits of background noise. Hope you understand, <laughs> it takes forever to restore. So, it's gonna sit here for just a few minutes. But especially once you've gotten to this point, it doesn't fail at this point. It's very reliable. The part where it fail is stuff where the screen's going wild and it's saying waiting for reboot on the device. Now at this point, Red Snow itself is going to say that the process is done and everything is going to be done in your device from now on. So that means I can unplug and at this point uh, I can move my iPhone all around. I don't have to be plugged in again with the background noise sorry about that and we don't even need the computer anymore to continue also it's it's worth mentioning at this point i'm aware my iphone is in absolutely awful condition this is actually the eye device i've had for the longest time and it really reflects that as i've had it since i was like six or seven and if you know anything about six or seven year olds they don't treat their stuff well i dropped this outside of chipotle that's how the screen got cracked it was many years ago You'll have to forgive me, but I'm just going to let this finish. And here we go. And now I'm getting text messages, so my phone's buzzing and there it goes again. My mom's watering plants, so she keeps having to refill her water bottle. That's what's going on. Hey, at least that adds a bit of humor. So obviously we can tell it worked because A, the device isn't in recovery mode, and B, we got home screen wallpaper, which wasn't a thing on the 3G. And there we go, see ya. Now unlike the 2G, where you have to fix a bunch of stuff after you jailbreak, none of that's a problem here. Uh, you just go right into Cydia and it should work. We got user, hacker, developer. <laughs> I picked developer even though I'm definitely a user because I like being able to see everything and I'm not on Wi-Fi because again, this was a clean restored device. I didn't set that up yet. So I gotta go do that, I'll be right back. And there we have it, just in time for my mom to walk back in the door. I am now on Wi-Fi, so we should be able to launch Cydia now. And there we go. Obviously it's an old version, a bunch of packages will need updates. But the thing is, it shouldn't need to be fixed or patched or anything. It should just be able to update all by itself, and it should work. And of course, everything's very slow, as this is the iPhone 3G. So I'll be cutting out a lot of waiting here, but that's just going to end off this tutorial. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you do have an old computer that you did manage to successfully jailbreak here. And I hope that you won't get your iPhone 3G too slow with a bunch of tweaks because it really is slow because the 3G was basically a 2G with 3G connectivity. And the 2G is already a bit slow on iOS 3 and they decided to get this up to iOS 4 and it's just slow. But there you go, you're jailbroken now. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see everyone next time.